It's called the scourge, and no droid is safe from its corruption. As the scourge spreads from one droid to the next, both Rebel Alliance and the Empire face uprisings, chaos, and terror as their closest companions turn against them. With every passing moment, the infection learns more and grows stronger. But its goal is limited to dominating mechanical intelligence? No! We are talking Star Wars Dark Droids, issues one through five today. I am Vactor. I'm here with two outstanding gentlemen. First up, the Star Trek genius, Shaw. How are you doing, Shaw? <laughs> How's it going, everybody? How's it going? Good to be Excellent. here. Good to be here. And we have Purple Friday, Weaver State's own Tim Costello. How are you doing, Tim? Oh, great, Vector. Great. I'm doing wonderful. Perfect. I could not have asked for two better gentlemen to talk Star Wars Dark Joys with me because I know both these guys are great comic book fans and great Star Wars fans. So we're going to have a great talk today. Um, let's get right into Dark Droids. Um, so this was written by Charles Soule and illustrated by Luke Ross with some covers, some fantastic covers by uh, Laniel Yu. Now, so it's, it's Soul, it's Soul, not Soleil? It's Soul. Yes. Yeah, it's Soul. Yes. Every time I looked, I was like, Soleil, Goulet. That, <laughs> that would be an interesting uh, pronunciation. But I know Tim Costello is a huge Charles Soul fan. Huge. <laughs> As Sorry, that, that, that was my off. saber. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Shaw. Sorry the, about keep that. that. Keep that, that, that in your pants, Shaw. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Ah, ah, ah. All right. As Shaw goes off, uh, Tim, I know you're a huge Charles Soul fan. Yeah. So, when did you first hear about Dark Droids? When did it first come across? Uh, it came your across. Radar? I think it was during it was some Comic Con or celebration where you know, because Charles Soul, you know, through his Star Wars run ever since he started in 2020, has been doing like these like mini arc things. You know, he had War of the Bounty Hunters. Uh, Crimson Rain, Hidden Empire, and now Dark Droids. And so everyone was wondering, well, now that that's over, now that, that trilogy of Kira stories is over, what's next? And then he announced Dark Droids, and everyone was excited because, you know, this is something that could possibly shake the entire Star Wars universe because what is the Star Wars universe run by? Droids. Everybody's got one. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Very interesting stuff. And Shaw, I, as you... As everyone can see on your shirt, you are a huge Trekkie and uh, Trek fan. Were you getting some Borg vibes in this <laughs> Dark Droid story? That you know, I, <laughs> I wanted people to think that this was purely ironic, right? But <laughs> it was intentional because absolutely, th this issue or this series of five issues really like felt to me like it was Star Wars saying. Hey, Star Trek, we see you out there. We like what you're doing with the Borg, and we're just going to borrow a little bit of it, and I hope it's okay. So, And it's totally okay in my book because it works really well, and this is a very excellent miniseries in my personal opinion. So, But because of the Borg influence, I couldn't help but not wear my Star Trek shirt. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. I love it. It's amazing fact that you mentioned Borg influences because I definitely felt that. In, the, in in this story, but I also felt some elements of Terminator, uh, mm -hmm. Battlestar Galactica with the Cylons, a little bit of Age yes. of Ultron on the Marvel side. You know, a lot yes. of those te technological takeover stories that we're so familiar with throughout this whole thing. And, yeah. and Captain EO. Let's not forget about Captain EO. Ooh. There was definitely some influence there. <laughs> <laughs> That is Shoff, everybody. That is the mind of a Shoff, and I love it, and I can't wait for more. Um, I really liked the droid priest, Ajax Sigma. Mm -hmm. This dovetailed off of the previous thing, because Hidden Empire like dovetailed right into this. And But yeah, this is the first time we've seen, seen Ajax Sigma. He looked a lot like... Um, like the droids that you see on the Halcyon at, on Galactic Star Cruiser. Mm, yeah. So I got yes. that, that, those kind of vibes from, from him, but I really like this character. But yeah, first time, first time. Yeah, I really like his whole, like the, it, this is, like Tim said, this is like have huge ramifications for the whole Star Wars universe overall. This intelligent droid, this kind of sentient droid 
and there's a whole faction of them. There's this Ajax Sigma is leading all of these droids that are coming into consciousness, awareness, and that, like Tim said, like the Terminator, it's uh, that Skynet thing, and all of that is fascinating to me. I love that part of science fiction, and so putting it into Star Wars, it's like dipping that peanut butter into the chocolate shop. I love it. I Can love I ask it a those... question, though? Because yes. this is a little bit confusing to me, and maybe it's just I'm not as versed in Star Wars as I am in, say, Star Trek, but like I've felt a lot of times that in the Star Wars universe, most droids have sentience, it seems. It's degrees like degrees of sentience. Like, you know, you, yeah. Because you have C3PO's distinct personality. You have R2's distinct personality. But yes. I think Ajax is a little bit different because he's like seemed to be operating on a higher level. Um I agree. I agree. But yeah, like for instance, um, I mean, we don't want to talk about Rise of Skywalker, but in Rise of Skywalker, there's even a part where 3PO like is about to lose all his memories. It's a whole plot device, but like he looks upon his friends. He's like, he's, he, there's an emotional connection and an attachment to these, uh, these compadres of his. And, and like, you can see that there's heart behind this metal, if you want to put it that way. Right. So like, we've seen it in, in droids, not just those two main hitters, R2 and 3PO, but, um, it definitely feels like this Ajax character is a step above, like you said, Tim. And, and really interesting to me because he's got his own little like religious society and like a little like cult of sorts. Um, yes. yeah. And uh, I, when I saw him appear, I was like, please tell me he's been somewhere else because this can't be like the first appearance of this character. But yeah, they had um, a side story, the D squad that was um, leading off into some other droids and their whole like rebellion this is kind of like the biggest thing that we've seen him in, I think, so far. And I can't wait to see more. Like, the way this leaves off, the ending of this story, um, Ajax is definitely feels like he's going to be a bigger player mm -hmm. down the road in Star Wars. So, yeah, I, you know, I got to give my hats off to Charles Soule. Anytime I see his name on a book, not, not only Star Wars, but just any comic in general, I say, all right, I know this is going to be good. Like, yeah. there's... I don't think there's been a comic that he's written that has let me down so far. So uh, Dark Droids is just another in his another feather in his cap. And I think the way that he's kind of with the High Republic and then with just the main Star Wars title, he is the almost like the Dave Filoni of the comic yeah. Star Wars comics, where he's like the main person in charge, I think, of shaping what the storytelling is, what the narrative is. So I'm really Did you get the, the sense that this particular series was sponsored by Arby's? Cause, uh, cause that's kind of the vibe I got because it seemed like every page, fries, every page, the, 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 the uh, scourge, right? Like whoever, like the main mm -hmm. droid, right? He's always talking about the meat. He's got to have oh. the meats. We need the meats. He's always like, I must move from the metal to the meats he's like give me my meat i don't need to beat my meat right yeah. now he wants to go to arby's <laughs> because he doesn't have the meat and they have it yeah they, <laughs> we have the meat yeah <laughs> yes i require yeah. the meat the metal and the force that, <laughs> yeah first it comes for the metal then it it wants the meat yeah so i have never seen a comic book mention meat so many times <laughs> Um, but I'm here for it because it just made me hungry. Every time I read it, I was like, you know what? I could go for some meat right now too. Yeah, it's it's definitely playing off of that, like the 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 metal versus the the meat, like you said, the the cyborg or the the, the mechanical intelligence versus the human intelligence or the you know the human consciousness. And I think that's very interesting setting this whole thing up because we've had, like Shaw brought out the point, the charismatic droids before of you know our main guys uh, r2 and 3po and we even bb8 you know down the line of uh, bd BT, bd1 like all of the ones that have this charisma and you you fall attached to them like you become attached to them but they never felt like this high intelligence like the scourge and like ajax so i think this is like a new something new in star wars and I think a lot of people online have uh, have been talking about droid rights and like, oh, why do they treat the droids like crap when they 
they, we, they can clearly feel like they have these pain receptors. Like we see them get branded and scream in the Star Wars universe. So people are always like, why do they treat the droids like slaves and like helpers? But then they have feelings. They have emotions. They have uh, pain. They can feel pain. So I like where this is going. I like this. It's like a new avenue for Star Wars. And it, it's only a matter of time, I think, before we see a force sensitive droid and, and there's force sensitivity in this section of the galaxy. So I like where this is going. I like him trying to learn about the force, jumping into Luke and being like, oh, I know what the force is now. So this this whole hive mind and hive intelligence was I like was the very interesting. Of that too, like you know, learn like him learning about the force because first he we can call it possession, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, assimilation. Yeah, um, <laughs> droid possession. Um, yeah. where he's possessing C three PO and talking to Luke about the force and like what it is and and uh, and. Luke's just none the wiser. I'm like, oh yeah, the Force is this and this and this. Like, oh, yeah. and it's some really good dialogue about the Force. That's one thing I've loved about Soul's tackling of Star Wars is he tackles the Force in very interesting ways. If you've watched Vector's shorts this week, you'll see that there was one on Avar Chris and how she kind of views the Force as kind of music and melody and song. Um, so that's a creation of his. And so I've always liked that. And so then when we get to the, like, I think the fourth or fifth issue, when the droids were like, we will become the new force. I'm like, what is this? Like, what does this mm. mean? And it just was really, really like entertaining stuff and really interesting stuff for Star Wars to tackle. Because as we said, yeah. droids are everywhere. Everybody's got a droid. It was only a matter of time before they like rose up against you know, the alien and human population, right. because there's more droids than there are humans and aliens. Right, right. Yeah, that's all of this stuff is very interesting psychologically to me of this new corner of the Star Wars universe. Shoff, do you feel like this is an exciting thing to have in Star Wars? Or do you think it's kind of like, yeah, I can take it or leave it? Like, what are your thoughts on this droid uprising and having a higher intelligent droid in the Star Wars universe. Oh, I, I love it. Honestly, when the opportunity came to review this comic and having not read any of it, the fact that it was strictly focused on droids, I was kind of like, I don't know. Like, is this really going to be worth my time? Like droids are droids, like just metal, metal buckets, you know, like that, that mm -hmm. move like, um, but there was a lot of personality and the, the narration conducted by this, this scour scourge character, like mm -hmm. really, really fascinating getting in the mindset of this, of this creature that uh, craves uh, to be sort of like um, within everything to be everything. Um, and that, that insatiable appetite for it. And uh, I loved getting in that, that perspective because it's one thing to be like to see a villain to see the bad guy of the the arc but you don't really understand the motivations and i felt like he was a sympathetic character in that regard especially in like the later issues when you see that his <clears throat> consciousness has sort of been compartmentalized uh into various droids in sort of like a inner circle uh if you will um and that was really really interesting to see you know, th those aspects of his personality um, fragmented so that he could interact with them. Because imagine how what that would be like for us if we could get into our own brains and sort of unpack all that stuff that's sort of uh, overlapping and leaning on each other. Like it was such a great way to, in a very effortless approach in how he wrote it, to just make it something that we could see happen in front of us. I loved it. Yeah, like like Tim said, very Ultron esque, like the 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 formation and yeah, going into drone bodies and things like that, very Ultron esque, and I like that too. I can see why he did it. Like it's very um, the way that he chose to do that, making the the droid kind of human in that regard. It makes sense, but in, in the back of my mind, I was like, these droids would probably be better than a human they would probably be more powerful and the the amount of computing data and, and calculations that they're doing he's not gonna go crazy like he's he's gonna be a machine he's gonna be like everything's gonna be perfect in my mind i was like but i understand where where he was going and kind of giving him that human limitation of 
your mind like can only handle so much. So I liked it. I'm not saying I didn't like it, but at the same time, I was like, this is a machine. I think he would be more binary. It'd be either he's sane or not. Like there's not that kind of, well, maybe I'm going crazy. I'm halfway crazy, but it was a lot of fun to read that. Like the crazy, the, like him kind of going insane and, and splitting off all of his, his personality. There so are that was no cool. strings like on me. <laughs> <laughs> very, did you catch very that? So that the disc that first gets like uncovered right at the ruins oh, yeah. where the mm -hmm. scourge sort of first kind of like enters his, I don't know, reboot phase or whatever mm -hmm. and starts to realize like what he wants. That symbol looks a lot like the Brainiac symbol. Yeah. It's got like three dots and like they connect like, you know, like, yes. and I'm like, yes. and, and in essence, sort of adopting a, the Brainiac's like approach of like wanting mm -hmm. to like consume and, um, and so like, I could just see all like the influences sort of like coming together with that and, yes. and yeah. the nature of assimilation into a, a hive mind and all like there's, you could tell where Charles like, is dipping from and it's mm -hmm. all great stuff like it, it's high quality material that's done and created and made new but you could definitely see those touches and and i i like that yeah i, I really yeah. It's, funny, this, it's funny you mentioned that open you've mentioned several times off that opening narration and um i think that opening narration like from the scourge really sets the tone for this book and it's what makes yeah. it different from other charles soul works like vector said i'm a huge fan um, and I've read several of his stuff. Like I'm making my way through his superhero stuff. I just finished the first trade of his Thunderbolts run. It's really good. Um, and like, but all of his other Star Wars stuff, like because it takes and this takes place in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Um, like that's where the timeline he's operating. And even though that timeline is like it's kind of dark esque because you know of where we leave everybody at the end of that movie. Um, it still feels very lighthearted and that's very much soul style, but this very much felt very dark and very like foreboding in a lot of ways, which was, it was refreshing, but it was very new and interesting for, for soul to do. Uh, Cause every time we get to the scourge and you know, when the scourge is there, he's a, he's dark, like he's a dark toned character. Um, the, the speech bubbles are like purple ish and dark ish. And so that darkness was very much pervading this book and it's what separated it because I did read the, because I do read the Darth Vader and ongoing Star Wars titles as well. So like, and there were some connections, but there weren't like overwhelming where you felt like you were going to miss something. And, um, but it's like reading the Star Wars book, it's still very much lighthearted because it focuses on Lando and, um, but this just felt so dark and it was, it was mm. like, I was captivated like every issue because of the darkness that pervaded it. And yeah. Wow. It, yeah, it really did a great job setting up the tone that for, for foreboding tone um, throughout and just kind of like, you could feel it on your back. Um, we haven't talked about Luke Ross's art in here. Um, he's actually looking through his work. I'm like, I don't remember seeing his name, but then I was looking up his credits. And I was like, oh, I've read a lot of the stuff that he's done in the Star Wars universe. He did the Darth Maul story in 2017. Yeah. He did the Jango Fett story um, in 2020, oh, recently. And he did the Thrawn book. So there's a ton of stuff that Luke Ross has been doing in the Star Wars universe. And I think he did another great job here. Like nothing, nothing about his art, I can say, is uh, not good. Like I, I just enjoyed the presentation overall. Um, Shoff, did you have any uh, qualms with his art, or are you like? No, it? no, I loved it. I loved it. I, there was some great. Uh, the way it was uh, framed, there was a lot of very cinematic uh, touches to it. it. It, and I loved also the the first person point of view of mm, the droid yes. eyes, yeah. like mm -hmm. when you're like seeing like what kind of hijinks they're getting into. Um, <clears throat> I loved that. I loved the expansiveness of some of the space shots where like the shuttle has the mouser droid just like sliding off the, uh, off the wing. And then like, just like yeeting itself over to the Republic frigate. Like I loved all of that. It was so, 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 so great. So um, very enjoyable, 
very, very enjoyable. The Vader scenes were really, really cool. I also loved the look of the the Imperial Star Destroyer that got totally like borgified. Oh, I love that ship. I love that ship. That was so cool. Oh, cool. Called the Scourge One. Oh yeah. man. I was like, this is this is sick. If I saw that in space, I'd I'd freak the hell out. Yeah, that would <laughs> I would go the opposite direction and be like, nope, nope, Fort nope, turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> And this is something that they could bring back. Like, this could be like the Borg in Star Trek. Like, it could be a villain that, you know, when you say Scourge, okay, we know. Or it's almost like in Halo, like the Flood. Like, when you say that name, then people kind of get, oh, this is a heavy hitter. This is something not to be played with. And it's going to be very difficult to take them out. I think Charles Soule has set up now, kind of in this universe, like the the threat of droids and what can happen if you take over the whole, the whole um, network of droids. So there's some really good stuff here. Uh, Tim, I forgot to ask you, have you read any of uh, Luke Ross's other stuff that he did? Any of his other Uh, books that he illustrated? What were they again? Uh, Jango Fett, Thrawn and Yoda. Um, I've started reading Yoda. I haven't read it. I haven't finished yet. Um, art's good there and the art the art here is great as i've said on other podcasts that i've been on of yours it if it's screen capable then it's good for me um because i read my comics digitally and so if 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 a piece of art or image it looks good enough to screen cap then it's good for me this had a lot of them anytime the scourge was on was on a page when whenever you know we get these armies of droids you know with the purple eyes and was just wonderful seeing all these droids come together and like D squad does factor in a little bit into the, in, into the story. But what I've loved about, um, because, you know, because I'm a dad and, you know, have other commitments, I'm not able to read all the books that I want to. So I limit it to the star Wars and the Darth Vader. And so, but even just reading those, I don't feel like with, because even though this is a story that is going throughout the star Wars comics, I never feel like with these, with with this, or the Bounty Hunters, Crimson Rain, and Hidden Empire, I never feel like I'm out of the loop, um, mm. which is always refreshing when reading an event comic yeah. like this. Because often when you read event comics, you feel like, well, I feel like I'm missing something here. Like, that's why people right. don't like to read them. Uh, yep. And so, but but with, with Soul, he always manages to help you feel like you're not totally lost. Like, here's what's going on here. Here's what's going on there. You can read it, but you don't have to. Shoff and I also, we just read this. We're not kind of dipping our toes into all the other Star Wars books. So that's a great point. This is, you know, you don't need anything else specifically. If you do read those other books, it's like you get a little background and filling in some of the universe. But just sticking with Dark Droids, we didn't have any issues. It was a clear told story and... I think that is very important because that's actually a really big problem. I think right now with mainstream comics in general, Marvel DC image, getting new readers to come in and getting people to kind of stick around and not feel like it's that the, the, the stigma of going into the comic book shop and it's a bunch of sweaty nerd guys and, the comic book guy from the Simpsons and it's like, you can't get into it because droid ever. (laughs) You haven't read 40 years of backstory. Okay. Get out. You don't belong here. Like it can be very um, intimidating to get into comics. And I've, I've seen a lot with new readers, Gen Z in particular now, now that are on TikTok and they're doing all these other things. How do I get them to read a comic book and how do I get them to get engaged so this is important. Things like Dark Droids, where you can just hand it to somebody and say, okay, I don't need you to read 50 issues of Star Wars, the main story, and 20 issues of Darth Vader. Here's Dark Droids. You can read it, and that's all you need. So we need more like this, more of this uh, stuff to come out from Charles Soul. So I think everyone here uh, gives Dark Droids a thumbs up. This is a very good book. I think everyone who is listening to this or watching this, if you're on YouTube, will have a great time with Star Wars Dark Droids. Um, I'd like to thank my panel here, two outstanding gentlemen. They are the chef's kiss of comic book reviewers, Shaw and Tim Costello. Thank you, boys, for joining me. So I think 
we all can say that this comic really cooks. Cooks, yeah. yeah. Fire. <laughs>